I saw this thing on here where you could uh, publish to uh, two channels at the same time. I ain't figured it out yet though. I saw it though. Saw it though. I would any two to any any two channels. I would any two to any any two channels. I would any two to any any two channels. I would any two to any any two channels. I would any two to any any two channels. I would any two to any any two channels. I would any two to any any two Good morning, Facebook fam. Good morning, Facebook fam. Class, did you get the link? Did you see it? Did you see the link on there? I'm, lo I'm looking forward now, I man. I actually tagged your page in it, so, you know, so okay. it should show up like that. Anyway, what's going on, Facebook fam? It's your boy, Big Q, Team Boy TV. I'm joined by my main man, Glass from Get With The Sports. What's going on, Glass? Oh, everything's fine and dandy mm -hmm. on a beautiful Wednesday morning, man. Yeah, yeah. Table for the next game. It's all good. It's all good. Right. Nice, crispy fall day. I don't know what the weather's like in the shy. But it's actually pretty well, you know, of course, we got Hurricane Lumen, you know, it's making its way, it's making its way up through this way. But uh, hopefully by the time it, it hits here, it doesn't die down and all that kind of stuff. But uh, shout out to the people down in Florida and lower Georgia, man. Y'all y'all stay safe. Stay safe down there, man. It's getting rough. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's a nice, crispy fall day, man. It's uh, It feels nice. I need to cut my grass. But other than that, I think we could, though, you know. Yeah, I definitely need to do that. Look, I think we got a, a a pretty good good show lined up for us today. I want to say this though, man. You and uh, you and JB and some mm -hmm. other and some other people uh, from from Monday night. Listen, man, y'all kind of y'all 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 a little harsh on me, man. Y'all a little harsh you know, on me. Hey, now. we could have been a whole lot worse, man. Hey, come on now. Y'all was harsh, man. No, <laughs> right. no team has not showed up yet, man. You know, I agree with that. You know, I agree with that. We're going. In fact, one of the stories that we're going to talk about. It got to do a little bit with the Carolina Panthers. Uh, not a whole lot. It's more about somebody else, but it can't, I got a Panthers tie into it. But yeah, y'all were rough, man. You know, but I, I think uh, I think uh, I had it coming, right? Because you know, I, I know I was a little bit of I was a little bit of an ass last year. I know I was, right? You know, <laughs> I know I was. <clears throat> but you know, <clears throat> but like I said the other night, it's all fun and games when you're winning, and it's all fun and games when you're dancing and dabbing and taking yes. group photos and all that stuff. Uh, the Carolina Panthers got a ways to go, man. They got a hole to climb out of, which is a uh, Another story we're going to talk about today. We got how many? It's a seven winning, winning three teams. Is that we got right now? It's six or seven. I want to say seven. Seven what? One in three teams. Oh, I think it's one, like six two, or seven. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Ten? Wow, I didn't think it was that many. Yeah, so we're going to talk about those teams and seeing uh, which one of these teams will be able to. Uh, you climb out of that hole. Which one's more likely to climb climb out of that hole and uh, and that kind of thing? So we'll talk about that. We're also going to talk a little bit about, you know, I guess it's the hot button topic, you know, this week. Uh, Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, we we're gonna we're gonna talk. Why well, don't we we spoke a little bit about it uh, on the Team Boy TV Live, but we'll we'll talk a little bit about that uh, on the show today. So I want to thank everybody who's joining us. I see we got uh, some people in the uh, in, in the Facebook Live. Welcome to Three and Out. Let's jump into it, uh, Glass. Shall we? So. Let's do this one first because, you know, I, I, I need to kind of get this out of my system because, uh, you know, uh, I have a lot of people that follow me and, and I follow on, on Twitter, a lot of Carolina Panther fans. Like most of, most of the folks who I interact with on Twitter are Carolina Panther fans, right? And um, witnessing some of the stuff that I saw on Sunday uh, was a little bit disconcerting to me a little bit. I was a little bit uh, disappointed in some of the things that I heard 
Carolina Panthers fan saying, one of the main things, and I wanted to get your perspective on this too, uh, because, you know, I told you guys on Monday night, I, I disagreed with this completely, right? So we all know the story. Sunday, Carolina Panthers go down to the Georgia Dome. And I mean, a, a lot of people were expecting maybe Carolina would probably drop that game. Uh, you know, Atlanta went into that game pretty hot, number one scoring offense in the league, all that cool stuff. What I don't think a lot of people expected was a 500-yard day by Matt Ryan, 300-yard day by one Julio Jones, right? Mm -hmm. The topic, though, a lot of Panther fans been saying this on social media. They're bringing up Josh Norman's name, right? And you know, and, 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 and coupled with the fact that Josh Norman had a pretty decent day on Sunday, right? Um, mm -hmm. Saying, this is what they say, if Josh Norman was still on the team, you know, basically, they kind of saying that it's a Carolina Panthers front office blunder by letting Josh Norman go. Uh, and, and this is why we are dealing with what we're dealing with right now. If Josh Norman was uh, available to play for the Carolina Panthers on Sunday, Julio Jones would not have had a 300-yard career day. Uh, it wouldn't have been as bad as it was out there. And, mm -hmm. um, and Carolina would have won the game. Now, before I tell you why I disagree with all of that, I want to know how you feel about just that statement right there alone. Uh, the Carolina Panthers fans feel like Josh Norman would have been the savior and that debacle we saw down in the Georgia Dome wouldn't have happened the way it happened. How do you feel about that? You know what? That's an easy, that's an easy outlet. That's where I, that's the way I said, because you got to think from the team that you had last year to the team that you have this year, the only variable that's missing, Josh Norman. Mm -hmm. so, you, so just to be, just to think simple, well, it must be Josh Norman that's that we miss him. We we're not back at the fifteen-one caliber type team yeah. or the Super Bowl caliber type team. So that's like I said, that's the easy answer to everything. Now, if Norman was on the team, okay, yeah, uh, Julio Jones might not have got three hundred yards. He would have got two hundred twenty-five yards, two hundred fifty yards. Right. Um, everything would have. I believe Atlanta still would have won. It just wouldn't have been as. I don't think Matt. Uh, Matt Ryan would have had his 500-yard day. Right. But he would have had like a good 350, maybe 400-yard day. Yeah. So Josh Norman is not that dude that the, that the Carolina Panther fans think he is. It, it ain't one man. You got to stick to what you got now and change what need to be changed on that team. Mm -hmm. There's something wrong. Like I told you uh, Monday during the uh, uh, Team Boy team team Live show, Cam knew, and you even mentioned it maybe a week ago. Cam knew something wrong with Cam knew. Right, right. Whether it's he been hit, hit, he he's punched drunk, whatever, whatever it is, he got to get back to that, to that. Not even say MVP status, get to that elite status right. that he was last year. You know where he's having fun. He's 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 moving around in the pocket. He's breaking off when he needs to. He, it's like he's he's scared now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so his, his, his passes aren't as accurate as it was last year. So Josh Norman's gone. Let's Panther get over it. Let's, let's move on, so, right? So <laughs> yeah. What you got it right now, because it can't be fixed. The Carolina Panthers are still a, a playoff caliber team. Right. You got time. It's only, what, we going into week, week five, five right now. You got yeah. time to, to right the ship. You're only two games behind the Falcons. Right. And we all know, like you said last year, Falcons was going what six and one. Yeah, winning one more game after that, so we know it we know. change. It can, you know, and and the thing that that I was most uh, upset about is that uh, a lot of Panther fans were. Okay, so they were calling, you know, we've seen this like three years ago, right? We've seen this like three years ago where Panther fans were fire Ron Rivera, fire offensive coordinator Mike Shula, you know, this, that, and the third. When, you know, I, I know as a fan, you know, you can kind of see things through rose tinted glasses, you know what I mean? Like, and, and especially, and I think I mentioned this on, on the show on Monday, uh, that Panther fans, apparently they haven't been Panther fans for a long time. Because they act like what we saw last year was the Panthers' M.O., and this is what they've been since the inception of time. And that ain't, that ain't the case. Carolina, that, that was the absolute best season they ever had in their existence, right? Mm -hmm. And, I mean, come on, we all kind of expected them to come out and kind of repeat that. Um, mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, you, you can't really – I don't know, just like you had said, the, the, the core of the team ain't changed that much, right? Josh Norman is no longer there. We had um, a couple of dudes in the secondary retire. We had Jared Allen ride off into the sunset, uh, things like that. But for the most part, we gained stuff. We got some people back that we m were missing last year. Um, so, you know, again, I would say that I would give the Carolina Panthers secondary, since they're so young, a bunch of, we got three rookies starting back there. Um, we saw, you know, their performance against Julio Jones on Sunday. And I mean, I give them a pass. But Josh Norman, 
like you said, I, I think without a pass rush, you know, we still got the same guys up front. You still got short. You still right. got, you know, Keekley and, and, and Davis. That ain't changed, right? Johnson, mm -hmm. all, that front seven is still the same. They're mm -hmm. just not performing the same. And if you ain't getting no pass rush, if you can't get nowhere close to the quarterback, we saw this happen in Minnesota. We saw this happen with the, with the Atlanta Falcons. Carolina ain't got no pressure. And if you ain't got no pressure, you know, of course, the quarterback is going to take advantage of your young DBs you got back there, right? And right. and, and I, all I wanted was uh, for Panther fans to recognize that and um and not get all bent out of shape and thinking that Josh – like, listen, I, just like with Kelvin Benjamin last year, I feel like the loss of the player, yeah, it's going to have some type of impact, right? Um, You know, Kelvin Benjamin went, went in the lineup last year and everybody thought it was doom and gloom. We saw uh, Josh Norman, you know, unceremoniously – Get get you know, get shown the door. I didn't think it was the end of the world. I mean, I, I'm a Josh Norman fan. Don't get it twisted. I think the dude is great, right? I, I just I just don't feel like he was a solo type of player who can change a game by himself. I just I just never thought he was that type of player. I thought that uh you know he relied heavily on the front seven, and you know right now it's just it, that's not there, right? It's mm -hmm. it's that's something that just that doesn't exist. And so pretty much you putting these young DBs on the island out there with greats like Stephon Diggs and. Julio Jones and people like that, which, you know, they outmatched. Simple right. and plain. That's just the way I see it, right? And, right. and you know, and, and, and but Carolina Panthers, they, they do not want to believe that. And you know, know what? Just to piggyback on what you're saying, I hear what you say about the secondary, they're young, but still mm -hmm. and yet, the front seven is not giving, not putting pressure on the quarterback. Right. Which means y'all mean you already know off, off the rip, you got a young secondary. So you need to, you, as in the front seven, need to help them out. Absolutely. And get to the quarterback yeah. to, to you know, get them acclimated to doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And I told you off air Monday, when we got off air Monday, what I think that the Carolina Panthers are really missing, like I said, like, like I said off air, even though y'all won 15 and one, y'all was throwing that ball all over the place. Yeah. When you can't throw the ball anymore, you, what you need to rely on. Your running, running game. game, right? Yeah, you, I think you guys are missing that double-headed. Oh, absolutely! Uh, it's, it's so it's so much going wrong with the Carolina Panthers team right now, which we'll get into when we get into the to the other story. Um, that this whole Josh Norman thing, it just to me, I I, I just don't agree with it. So, I, and I know, I, you know, I, all weekend I got roasted by uh, Carolina Panthers fans because. Um, because that's what I said, right? You know, and, and right. again, like, if you're a fan of the team, you got to keep it real, right? Like I said, it's mm -hmm. fun when you're winning, and you can overlook a lot of things. But now right. the veil has been lifted, and people right. see what the Carolina Panthers really are. And, I mean, you know, it's, it's a lot going on. It's a, it's a lot right. going on. It ain't just as simple as, you know, Cam ain't getting protection. It ain't as simple as we're not getting any pressure on the quarterback. It's not as simple as, you know, we got a young secondary. It, it, it's, it's a lot deeper than that. You know, it's a, it's a right. lot going on. But, you know, I wanted to just make sure that uh, the Carolina Panthers who believe this Josh Norman story, let it go. <laughs> you know, you know like, that's, like I said, that's just the, that's the only glaring thing that's different. Yeah. Like you said, there's other there's other things that need to be fixed. Don't worry about Josh Norman. Josh Norman is where he's supposed to be in Washington. That's right. Now worry what you got now. And um, there was something I was going to say after you said what you said. Uh, <laughs> I heard Herm Edwards. That's what it was. I think mm -hmm. yesterday I heard Herm Edwards said, Super Bowl winning teams, Super Bowl caliber teams, got a great defense. Mm -hmm. I don't care how, how, the, it, how the NFL trying to make the offense – the, spectacular the, and the high flying and all that. Yeah, you still got to have that defense to stop the ball, and you got to have that run game. That's right. And We're I think JB plain and simple last year with Denver Broncos. Absolutely, okay. JB brought up a, a fantastic point on Monday show when he said, "If you look at the last five Super Bowl winning mm -hmm. teams, they were all won by one by defense." I mean, we saw what happened with Denver and Seattle, and then we saw you know Denver, Carolina. We saw the Patriots how they won the game with defense, you know, and and all this kind of stuff. So. It's true, right? If you ain't if you ain't mm -hmm. playing defense, you ain't, now, Grant, I'm not gonna take nothing away from what Atlanta is able to do right now because honestly, they haven't been able to do this in a long time. But at the same time, though, eventually they're gonna mm -hmm. have to they're gonna have to stop somebody, right? They're gonna have to play some defense. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. or, or either they're gonna run up on a team with some defense, like we might see this Sunday, right? Oh, no, they gonna run up on the team, <laughs> right? You know, so <laughs> so you know, it, it, it's always the thing, right? So I, I don't know. Um, Defense got to pick up though. I mean, and that, that was Carolina's signature, and and you can't say that about the team no more. You know, you, you really right. can't. So moving on, we're gonna go ahead and 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 address the elephant in the room. And I'm gonna go ahead and let you set this one up because I feel I feel a certain type of way about this. So let's let's go ahead and, and go and talk about the New York wide receiver. Uh, go ahead and set this one up. <laughs> well, if you guys seen the game, I think it was was it Sunday night or Monday night. Monday uh, night. Yeah, it was Monday night game. Yeah. Minnesota. 
uh, the cornerback Rhodes on Minnesota was giving ODB the fit. Now, if you, if you can look at it, this is his MO. Be physical with him, get him frustrated, and just let him do what he's going to do. Absolutely. He will. He will. He's going he to hurt himself by himself. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And that's exactly what happened. I think <laughs> of Josh Norman. Josh Norman gave everybody the blueprint on how to get in this man's head Absolutely. and stay in his head. Yeah. I, I don't care if his teammates talking to him, the coaches talking to him. This man is a straight up. If I ever seen a prima donna, this man here is a prima donna. Absolutely. He just talking about you don't love the game anymore, man. Yeah. Come on, wait. you just mad because people got you got your ticket and know how to get in your. You head. know, I just don't understand how you can make a statement like I'm not. I'm not. See, basically, this is the part that that bugs me about Odell. Now the whole t- t- tantrums and all that. Listen. I think again that was exposed last season uh, with the whole matchup with with uh, Josh Norman, right? And again, I, and I said this ever since that game that I th- I think that Odell Beckham is better than Josh Norman. I think it, you know physically uh-huh. he got all the gifts to 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 defeat a, a cornerback like Josh Josh Norman. But Josh Norman knew he had one advantage. He saw that he could get under this man's skin and, mm-hmm. and see that he can get him to react the way he wanted him to react. Physically, I think Odell Beckham got all the gifts, man. I think he got all the gifts. It's just that mentally, he just doesn't have the strength to be able to. This is third. This is third year in the league. Like if you if you if you go back and think about it, right? Everything that Odell Beckham Jr. done before that Carolina Panthers matchup last year, this dude was a mega superstar. One handed mm-hmm. catches, making the cover mad, and all this crazy stuff. He was unstoppable. Head, shoulders, commercials. You know what I mean? Confidence was through the roof, right? You know. Right. Right. You know, did he get into this mental scuffle with, with with Josh Norman? And now, like, you know, Xavier Rose looking at him like, oh, I already know what I'm going to do to this guy. You know what I mean? Like, I already know. You know, and then and not even to mention that you still got to face Josh Norman twice a year now. You know what right. I mean? And they got into a little bit of a tangle earlier this season already. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Which, again, I think Josh Norman, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. physically got the best of Josh Norman then. But he would still be able to get into this man's head. The, the thing that really bothers me most about the kid, though, is that three years in, he's saying... Uh, the game is not fun anymore. And he's blaming like right. the referees and saying that they got something against him, and you know, and all this. And he's always being threatened to get you know ejected from the game. You know, and that's the part that's that's really crazy. Glass, the rule that was made because of him, he fell victim to still. I, I, that I don't understand. This rule exists because of you. You know what I mean? You know what, man? All right, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna, we're gonna keep it real on this show, right? Yeah, we're gonna keep it real. I think ODB. I hear what you're saying. He got an incredible skill set. But I, all right, I ain't gonna say he's overrated. I'm not gonna say that. Mm-hmm. I think he rose to stardom too quick. I will say that. He got it all off of that one catch. Right. And mm-hmm. I think it was on the Cowboys, right? Yep. Ever since then, you could tell he's 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 not he's a top five wide receiver. He's top five, and and yes, he is. But some tell me he got to his head too quick. Yeah. He got all this stardom. He got all this fame. He's over there hanging with the Kardashians. Oh yeah. He's hanging with Drake, dude. Listen. On in them grit on that field, they don't care who you hang out That's with. That's absolutely man. right. And like yeah. I said, Josh Norman gave up gave up the blueprint. Everybody gonna do this blueprint, and he's wasting so much energy trying to do trying to get back. Yeah. Instead of running his routes, that's where he's messing up. Dude, get your yards. Don't worry about this fool. Cause he's gonna keep on doing what he's doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just go get your yards. Don't worry. See, he's he going out of bounds. He's gonna come back in and try to get a lick in. Don't yeah. get no lick in, man. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's saying, you know, do what Steve Smith do. Yeah. Put it on the field. Show it on the field. Be physical. Right. Be physical. Be physical in a certain way where you're not being exposed and getting all these. Um, the penalties and, st- and stuff like that. Like yeah, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Now, you know, speaking of being physical and, you know, because we just we saw on Sunday uh, Steve Smith being really, really physical out there on the field. Now, I saw, mm-hmm. I saw Odell Beckham put a move on Josh Norman last week. It was a spin move, stiff arm type situation. I thought that was impressive. I was like, "Look, dude, mm-hmm. if you got, if you got, if you feel some type of way about your opponent, this is this is the way you you get at him, right? You know what I'm saying? Don't go into this jaw jacking and all this conversation and, and and all this stuff. This that's what you do. You make him look silly out there because because you physically can do that, you know. Right. And, and then and just to see him regress from the the Washington game going into the Minnesota game and Xavier Rose mm-hmm. is just like whatever, man. You know you ain't gonna punk me like that, you know. And it was and it, and it's basically looked like the DBs will. Will just do it right from the get go, just to just to right. get him unraveled early, right? right? Because they know they'll take him out of the game. Okay, you got one unsportsmanlike conduct call on you already, so now you got to be careful. Now you got to be mm-hmm. super careful, or whatever. And um, and so I, I saw some uh, comments made by former New York Giants head coach 
Tom Coughlin, right? Mm-hmm. And he, <coughs> excuse me. He was saying that, you know, uh, he kind of saw the Bruin last year and then, you know, and, uh, and that Odell Beckham needs to grow up and he probably, you know, and you know, who, who was it? The, uh, John Gruden. John Gruden even said it this morning was like, you know, instead of Eli pulling him to the side or, you know, some of the coaches pulling him to the side, because you see somebody pull him to the side every week. Right. Mm-hmm. Instead of pulling them to the side, the coaches need to sit him down for a little bit. I, I know he got suspended for a game last year. Apparently, he didn't learn his lesson. Right. Mm-hmm. That didn't that didn't mm-hmm. prove nothing. Maybe if he sit down and see some other wide receiver get a chance and actually start taking advantage of this time that Odell Beckham is sitting on the sidelines, maybe right. he'll realize, okay, well, this is a little bit bigger than you know me and my attitude or whatever. You know, okay. At the end of the day, they do need an attitude adjustment. He need a wake up yeah. call and 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 know that this ain't high school football no more. Man, these grown right. men. These are grown men. And you out here crying and going on and getting into a fight with the kicker's net and all this crazy stuff. That makes no sense. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. And I, and I like I like Odell Beckham. I mean, I do. Yeah, I do it's too. Just, I like, do too. He just got like I said, he got mature. Keep his head on straight. Keep his keep his cool. Just play your game. That's yeah. all you got to do. If you play your game, everything gonna come to you. Everything's gonna fall in place. Yeah, okay. I I think so too. I, I just I just hope that you know, you know, and I ain't gonna say he was a, a contributing factor to. Uh, you know, the, the Giants lost because, you know, there was some other things going on in that in mm-hmm. game where they just wasn't playing well in, in certain parts of the game. Um, but that certainly does uh, hurt. And it, and it becomes a little bit of a distraction when, you know, now you got to worry about making sure your boy is cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. instead of you doing your assignment, you always got to be constantly looking over your shoulder to make sure your boy all right. You know, and I, right. I'm tired of going over here breaking up scraps between you and DBs and mm-hmm. stuff. Man, I ain't got time for this. You know what I mean? Like, I got my job to do. So it's a, it's a little bit of a distraction. And then, of course, you know, between the games, right, during during the course of the week or whatever, media running up on you, asking you about Odell Beckham. Like, dude, like, you want to interview me, but you want me to talk about Odell Beckham? You know, right. Ask me about me. Ask me about what I'm doing on the offensive line or, or whatever case may be. Ask me how I'm, I'm help protecting Eli's blind side. Don't ask me about no Odell Beckham. I don't want to talk about no Odell Beckham. You know what I mean? Like, and so it's a, it's a little bit of a distraction, in my opinion. You know, I feel like um, I just feel like you know he's taken away from what's really going on because the Giants came out and I was like, okay, well the Giants, you know, they gonna come out because this division, believe it or not, and we we talked about this in the, in the off season, we thought this division was gonna be a flat, you know, pretty, you know, mm-hmm. bad division. Okay, we got Dallas working. We got Philadelphia killing it. You know what I'm saying? Washington right. is even is even in the mix, right? So right now it's it's so tight. You can't afford to be playing around like this. You know what I mean? You, right. you, you can't. I just Hell, can't. in the off season, we think we said we had the Giants winning the NFC. We, we did. We absolutely yeah, did. Man. Now they last place with Washington. Yeah, it, it's, it's, luck, it's crazy. It, it, I, I just I just feel like you know it's way more bigger things going on right now for Odell, mm-hmm. and uh, he need to focus on what's really happening. He need to focus on trying to catch Philly. And, and thinking about what they're going to do against Dallas when they get the chance to meet up. Because, I mean, because, you know, Dallas is, is, is proven they ain't going to lay down this year, right? right. They're not. So, I mean, right. you know, that division is going to be a rough one. Why are you crying? Why are you, you know, mm-hmm. getting an attitude problem, getting mad at the referees and stuff, thinking everybody out to get you? You got a, you got a long road ahead of you, bro. Well, you know what? You made a good point. Coach McAdoo might have to sit that fool down because the Absolutely. way I see it, you ain't contributing anyway. Absolutely not. So if you ain't contributing, why? Sure, I can sit you down and bring something up in there that's going to do something. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's what it need to be. That's what need to happen. I think so. I, I believe if uh, if if they would have benched him, but you know, somebody else said something about the whole uh, Jimmy Johnson, uh, uh, you know, thing with Dallas. Like that's the way McAdoo and and Coughlin was even doing it. You know, a couple years ago, uh, approach where. Certain players, they can they can act out and they will automatically get reprimanded and punished right off the rip. Mm-hmm. But other players like your Michael Irvins and you know people like that, you know they sleep in meetings or not showing up to meetings and stuff like that. It, it ain't it ain't a, you know they'll nudge them and wake them up or whatever, or give them a call and be like, yo, you, you late or whatever the case may be. And and, right. and in New York, and I ain't saying that this is the way it is, but this is the way it look, right? Mm-hmm. Like the world see Odell Beckham Jr. wilding out, but we don't see any discipline. Uh, on the guy, we just see them coddling and hugging him and pulling him to the side and and telling everything gonna be okay. Instead of right. saying, "Dude, you need to sit down for a little bit because you need to get your until you get yourself together, you ain't playing." Well, you know, last year, well, this is the first year for McAdoo. Last, you know, Coughlin, yeah, known rule with an iron fist, so they know, you know, if you two minutes, if you two minutes early, you late. Right, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Right. So yeah, I, I, it's just, I, it's just, it's just. Um, 
ODB right now, man. Yeah, it's it's rough, man. It is rough. You know, between him and your boy uh, down in Dallas, uh, you know, claiming you know he he America's most hated. These wide receivers are wild in that right now. But you know, for every for every Odell Beckham and Dez Bryant, though, you got some bright spots. You got people like. Yeah. Uh, you know, Demarius Thomas and, you know, all these other good rappers. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. it, you know, so you can't really say, oh, wide receivers are divas and this. Because, you know, right now we only got really like two of them that are really kind of wilding out. For, for, for the rest of the wide receivers in the NFL, I think they're doing pretty good. Speaking of the wide receivers, I know going off the road real quick. Yeah. What what does Antonio Brown need to do in order to, to stop getting flagged for uh unsportsmanlike conduct when you do his celebrations, man? Well, I'm with, I'm with, I'm with, I'm with Tomlin. What did I mean? He gave you three. He gave you three twerks. Yeah, you got him. He gave you two twerks. You got him. I mean, come on, man. You know what? I, I think the twerking celebration. I, first of all, you know this is the thing. It, 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 I know this is the topic we probably didn't want to didn't want to cover, but it's the same thing with with Josh Norman got flagged twice for the bow and arrow uh, right. thing. Well, now in Washington, though, I can understand how that could be a little touchy, right? I can understand how that can be. A little right. bit touchy, right? That right. can be a little touchy, but but I mean, I don't understand what the difference between Antonio Brown's twerk and uh, Emmanuel this, Sanders, right? Well, yeah, yeah. So what's the difference there? Like that's right. I don't I don't get it. So I, I, that I don't understand. I can see if he, he you know he started and three other guys joined in with him or something like that, but right. you know, I, it's it's just I think the. I think the NFL has given the referees way too much power this year, now, now, especially with this, especially with this. And we talked about this at the very beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. This unsportsmanlike conduct uh, call is going to be a weapon for for everybody. Yeah. I mean, for the referees, for for you know the opposing team, it's 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 going it's going to get out of hand really quick, yeah. real quick. Now we ain't really seen too many players get ejected so far. I think we've seen like maybe two or three so far this season. Mm-hmm. It's, I'm telling you, when the, when the season starts to get to the, just start stretching out, it's going to get rough. Yeah, it's gonna get. I'm telling I you, I'm, and I'm gonna call people out now. Uh, some players, <laughs> players from Pittsburgh, players from Cincinnati, players from Oakland, players from Houston. You know what I mean? Players from uh, uh, New Orleans. Players from who else? <laughs> I'm, 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 am I missing some people here? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right. <laughs> so I'm just saying, it's gonna, it's gonna get rough real quick. <laughs> it really is. So we'll see how that turns out. The last thing we wanted to get into today, man, is uh, a lot of teams, including mine, and I know you and you ain't really got to worry about this because your team's still undefeated. But <laughs> but we have more one in three teams through four weeks of play than I think we ever had in the NFL ever. I right? agree. I agree. This is I bad. Agree. This is this is this is real bad. Um, and I don't know if this is a testament of uh, the way the the draft's been working out and everybody is pretty much drafting better and the talent is spread out a little bit uh, across the NFL more than what it was in, in years past because we don't really see a whole lot of domination across the league. Now, you know, because I'm not even going to say that Minnesota is a dominating team. I think they're playing well. I think they're playing um, extremely well. I think, you know, they their defense has improved a lot. Uh, they're looking really good at the quarterback position. Yeah, I can't even say really. The only dominant team I can think I can say is maybe Denver a little bit. Maybe, maybe if, if I say a team is dominating right now, it'll probably be them. But uh, Philadelphia, I don't think they're dominant. I think they just, you know, the defense is playing well, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that kind of thing. But as far as like, you know, before we had to worry about, uh, you know, New England Patriots coming out smashing everybody, right? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, teams like that will just come out and just rip everybody apart. Okay, and then, wait, know, wait, wait. What about the Vikings? But as I said, Minnesota, I don't think they're dominant. I don't I don't think they're a dominant team. You look at the performances they done put up, right? Like it ain't like they blowing people away. You know what I'm saying? Like they they, they defense is performing well, but the games are are, are, are kind of tight. You know what okay. I mean? Like, you know, the games are pretty tight. So I I think when they come out there, they outplaying their opponents, but I don't think they're completely I, I don't think they're at a point where I'll say, you know what, I, I on any given Sunday this team can beat you. I like, you know, I'm always gonna check off the Minnesota Vikings. I I, I don't feel like they, I, I'm still looking at the matchups. All right, all right, all right. Wait, I'm wait, still wait, looking wait, at the wait, matchups. Give the Vikings some credit, man. I'm giving them the credit. I'm giving them the credit. You said they ain't dominant. They went into your stadium. Oh, here we go. <laughs> no, no. no, 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 no That's not real disrespectful to me. <laughs> no, 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 man. But they went up to your stadium and and, and did, okay, look, they they sacked camp eight times. Okay, they had uh, a couple intercept. Look, is that but see, is that is that Minnesota being dominant or is that Carolina playing bad? So that's uh-huh. the that's the question. Let me ask you who they got to play in order to, to prove their point. I don't think it's who they got to play. I think it's how they play the games, right? I don't think I don't think it matters about the opponents, right? Because I think the level of competition for the most part in the NFL 
it's pretty even, right? For the most part, you you got some teams that obviously suck really, really bad, and then you got some some a few teams that are just really they they're on a different level, right? It's you got to bring some extra firepower to be able to compete with these guys. But for the vast majority of the NFL, they all kind of at the same level. That's why you got so many one and three teams right now because everybody right. playing at pretty much the same level. I think if Minnesota roll up somewhere and just beat the pants off somebody, like you know, hold them to. You know, 153 yards or something like that total. You know, offenses. Show me something that's dominant. They, and they haven't done that. I'm just saying they they okay. just they haven't done that. You know, okay. and, and that's what I mean. So that's what we see out of Baltimore. That's what we see out of out of Denver. We see stuff like that. We don't see, uh, you know, score 36 to 27. You know what I'm saying? You don't see that kind of right. stuff with them. You know what I mean? So so that's the difference. So when we look at the one and seven teams, I mean one and three teams. Uh huh. Um, everybody, you know, getting get, getting ready to go into panic mode. Because I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you. I, I, I do believe, and I know it's early, people are going to think I'm crazy, but I believe one the one team, the Carolina Panthers team, uh, I think the success of they, of their the season is actually going to hinge on what's going to happen this, this weekend. I, I really believe that that's how important right. this game is. And the fact that, you know... It's also important to the Bucs, too. It they is. Also three. It is, right? You know, and, right. I, and obviously, they're having some problems, right? The quarterback position, the, you know, Jameis Winston, you know, the, the, the coach came out and said he didn't think he was regressing, but he didn't think he was getting better either. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, he's throwing a whole lot of interceptions and, and going on. Uh, Carolina may have to go in and do this without Cam. But, of course, you know, Derek Anderson didn't beat the, uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with the last four... Games, I think. I think that, yeah. So that I ain't worried about too much. It's just, uh, it's important though for a one and three team, and especially a team coming off the Super Bowl and a team that, you know, is the NFC champions. Uh, they shouldn't be one and three. Uh, what else we got? Who else is a team? Oh, Arizona. Tell me about Arizona. Uh, let's see. Mm, they, you know what? They counterfeit. I don't, I actually don't know what their problem is. Mm-hmm. Nothing has changed from last year. No. So Carson Palmer, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give him most of the blame because I don't understand what the hell he doing throwing all these interceptions. Yeah. But last year, you, you was accurate until you could roll up to your team. Yeah. You was the man. Now It's carry over from that game, look like. <laughs> look like for me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's game. like, you know, they won in three. They going up against who they got. I got it right here. Uh, Who they got? Arizona, Arizona. They might be on the bye. I don't know. They might be on the buy. Yeah, they might be on the buy. I don't, I don't see them. I don't see them. No, they're not on the buy. So who they playing? Arizona. Let me see. Damn. Oh, who they? Oh, wait, do they have Thursday night? Oh, they, yeah, they got they, Thursday okay, night. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Arizona, San Francisco. They okay. need to win. They need to win the game. I mean, that one. That's a game that they they they, they, they can it win. It can't be won. Right. It can't be won. Now, you know, you know, you talking about Carson Palmer putting a lot on Carson Palmer. The defense and you know Tyron Matthew, Clayus Campbell, all them dudes, they've been giving up a lot of points too. Now, you know, yeah. like let's, let's let's keep it real, okay? <laughs> you know, they ain't playing up the par. They're not playing up the par. So you know, you got that. I, I feel like you know the, those two teams that played in the NFC Championship game, they kind of suffering from the same thing. You know, Arizona out there making movies and stuff. You know, talking. <laughs> you know, I mean, they doing all this stuff, and then you know they come back and and they ain't looking the same. You know, and everybody know what's going on with Carolina right now. So it's it's just rough. And then you got um. Who else? You got well, you got teams like Detroit, which I got excited for Detroit for a minute. I did, you know what I'm saying? I did. I got. I was like, okay, look at this defense. Look at these boys. And then, of course, um, mm-hmm. they 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 got some injuries going on right now, and um, and some other things. But um, I, I don't see them getting that much better. I, you know, I thought it was a spark there. You know what I'm saying? I thought it was. They a spark. play in Philadelphia next week, so yeah. we got to see. We're gonna see if Philadelphia the truth, and we're gonna see if, if Detroit is in panic mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think they're gonna be in panic mode. I think Philadelphia gonna go up in there and and, and take a win, man. Yeah, I, you know, I believe so too. I, I just, you know, Detroit just I, they had that one that one game. And I was just like, wow, look at this. You know what I mean? Right. I'm like, wow, this is good right. stuff. You know. Right. But then you got a few teams that actually then secured their first win: New Orleans, Chicago, Jacksonville. You know what I'm saying? You know, and I ain't ready to get back on the Jacksonville, Jacksonville bandwagon or nothing. But I'm just saying, I, I think those teams are are what they are. I think I think they are. I don't see much. I don't see much. I ain't saying that they ain't never gonna win another game this season. I'm just saying I just don't think uh, they're gonna get to a point where they climb out of this hole and, and make a playoff push. Not New exactly. Orleans, not Jacksonville, uh, no. not Cleveland, not. Um, because Cleveland still ain't won a game yet, right? Nope. They don't <laughs> right. Okay. So there you go. And uh, who right, let me let me run this by you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nay, Jets, New York Jets. New York Jets. I think the New York Jets can rebound. I think they can rebound. I think, uh, but see, I, they in the division where it's, you know, you got Buffalo in there, you got the Patriots, and you know what I mean. I ain't worried about the Dolphins. Okay, I, if they go, on, if they go on the whole one and four, 
You still got a chance? You think they still got a chance? It depends on how Buffalo plays, right? It, it, it really depends on Buffalo. You know, it really depends right. on Buffalo. Cause I, I, I mean, I, honestly, I don't think they're going to ever catch New Orleans. I mean, uh, New, New England. And, right. I, and I ain't worrying about Miami. Miami just going to suck this season. That's just the bottom line. Yeah. Uh, I right. think um, that second place spot and, and that possible playoff wild card, it, it, it's going to come down to Buffalo and New York, right? And, and and I think it all hinges on, I mean, you know, Buffalo had a big win last week, a real big mm-hmm. win, right? And it's a division win, and, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and it may have been handed to them, whatever you want to call it, it is what it is. Right. But, you know, that put them, you know, in a nice little spot right there, you know? So, you know, the Jets going to have to clinch some of those uh, those close games. I know, you know, you got the quarterback who you can't really, you know, I understand. The situation is bad. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, the reason why I said one and four, because I have them already losing next week. They go in the highest field to play Pittsburgh. They going to be. But you know, what? I, you know what? Pittsburgh is susceptible. Yeah, I, Look, if, if anybody, look, I know, oh, listen, you, look, if they if they go down to the to the Philadelphia Eagles the way they went down to the Philadelphia Eagles, they susceptible. Look, I ain't taking nothing from them. I'm just saying that I believe that they got some, some holes if the right coaching staff can explore it, like like uh, you know Peterson and all them did, mm-hmm. I, you know I think the I think the Patriots, I mean uh, the the Steelers can fold at any given time. I think they when they need to play and they they show up and they do a really good job. But it, it, but sometimes, man, I'm telling you, when they go into these matchups with with teams that's outside of their division, I don't know, man. I mean, I know they they well, made I'm quick. Going to let you know right now, they're gonna lose because let's not forget they got that two headed monster back. They got Le'Veon Bell back. Mm-hmm. They got D'Angelo Williams helping out. Yeah. That offense, the only weak part is the defense. Yeah, and I think they go, they they be able to go head to head with uh, uh, Brandon, Brandon Marshall. Fitzpatrick. Brian Fitzpatrick gonna throw at least two. I, I see, and that's the, that's the only point about it. Just that that's that's bringing me down a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But you know what? Right. It's a high profile game. Uh, you know, I like uh, I like I like the, if Buffalo could it, well again they 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 beat a, a, a kind of you know under underachieving Patriots things. I, I guess I really can't compare it to that. Okay. <laughs> right, right, here we go. You said Dolphins. We already said Dolphins off the, off the yeah. page. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Bears, Lions. Nah, I ain't worried about them. Right. I hate to see that. Yeah. Uh, now we got your division: the yeah. Bucks, Panthers, Saints. I, I think the Saints are going to struggle. I think they're going to struggle uh, coming coming out. Uh, you know, I think the Bucks will, will 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 show a little bit of fight. You know what I'm saying? Uh, right. I, you know, and I'm and I'm just this is wishful thinking on my part, but I'm hoping that we see Atlanta Falcons collapse and that'll give an opportunity for Carolina to climb back into things. But you know, here's the thing, um, and honestly, this is where I'm at with, with Carolina right now. I, I am at a point where I feel like the team is deflated right now, and I don't mm-hmm. know how many games it's going to take for them to to get back to a remnant, even like a small piece of what they used to be, right? You know, I, we saw the, the one game that they won against. Uh, who did they beat? Uh, who we talking about? Carolina. Uh, they won on 49ers, the forty nine, right? Yeah, forty nine. Yeah, so you play against the 49ers and and I don't know. They still didn't look right in that game to me. You know what I mean? And the game came down to the wire. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that. You know, it, it's I don't know how many games it's going to take. You know what I mean? I, I do got to feel it in the next four games. Mm-hmm. I feel like if if Carolina can't if they drop two of these next four. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be it's gonna be right. tough at that point. You know what I'm saying? So we'll, okay. we'll see. We'll see. I, I, you know, I'm hoping that you know Carolina can 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 turn it around. I just know that New Orleans. I don't see no change there. I just, I just gotcha. don't. yeah. Okay, 49ers Cardinals in the NFC West. This I'm gonna go first on this one. Yeah, I believe the Cardinals can get out of the hole because I don't know what to expect from a three and one Rams right now. I right. think they off that high moving to L. A. <laughs> right. Then they're gonna then, then reality gonna sit in, and I think that the Cardinals can walk them down and try to get that wild card spot. I think Seattle might win it. Seattle mm-hmm. looking good, but Cardinals could walk the Rams down. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna go against the grain here. I, okay. I think I've seen enough out of Arizona. Mm. I think I've seen enough out of Arizona. I, I, <laughs> you know, I think you know, and, and you know, I know San Francisco is showing they're not consistent, right? They're not, you know, week one they blow out the Rams. Mm-hmm. You know, week two, they get handled by the Panthers. You know what I mean? I ain't going to say handled. They, it was a good game. They, they played it to the wire. But but they haven't been able to win since week one, right? You know, when they when they had a, they, they pitched the shutout against the, the, the Rams, who since then, right, then held Seattle scoreless, right? Mm-hmm. Didn't they blow somebody? Didn't, didn't they didn't they pitch a shutout against somebody? I can't remember. I think against a divisional foe, I want to say. Arizona, I think. Yeah, Arizona, Arizona right. right. So right. it's so... I just I just believe that San Francisco, as inconsistent as they are, mm-hmm. I, I think you know when Blaine Gabbert and, and those boys show up, I, I have more faith in what they can do versus you know what I've been seeing out of Arizona so far. I, I'm gonna say it that way, you know. Okay, yeah. all right. Let's go to AFC South. We got three teams again: Jaguars, Titans, Colts. 
Yeah. Can I just say none of them? <laughs> none of them. The Colts not built. They don't have anything but Andrew Luck and then a couple of wide receivers. They don't have a defense. They don't have offensive line. So they don't, they're not equipped to come up out the hole. Yeah. Titans. I don't care what y'all say. As long as they got malarkey. I just, you know, it's it's so hard for me to like to look when I look at the Tennessee Titans. I, I'm just so disappointed that they're in the situation that they're in. They are, they are built to make it to the yes. playoffs, but they just have the wrong coaching style. How you got a team like this, right? That's built this way. Demarco mm-hmm. Murray, you know, Derrick Henry, you know, uh, you got tight that, end. I can't remember the tight end. It's got the tight end's name, but then you got that dude yeah. right or. Or whatever, yeah, Andre Walker. Andre Johnson. You got all this stuff going on, right? You know, Marcus Mariota, and you got the Texans. You know, just chilling. They they like like they untouchable, and they 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 are horrible. <laughs> you know what I mean? But they but they out of all four teams, they're the best equipped team. They got I like I don't care what anybody say. Bill uh, Bill uh, Bill what's Bill, Bill O'Brien Bill, Bill O'Brien. O'Brien. Halfway decent coach. I like him as a coach. I do. Yeah. Jaguars problem. They Jaguars are just like the Titans. They <laughs> built it. They built and they're ready to go. Yeah. Gus Bradley will not be there at the end of the year. You know, and that's sad because you know what? You know, beginning of the year, Jaguars looked like they was ready to do some stuff. You know what yeah. I mean? I, look, I yeah. thought it was going to be a slugfest in the AFC South. I thought it was going to be a knockout, drag out fight. You know, yeah, but then you got the I Texans agree. out of all four teams rising to the top. That is that is just I don't agree with that at all, but it is what it is, right? Okay. All right. <laughs> so do you, so what you say about all three? I think the one that got the best chance, and I'm I'm gonna stick with Tennessee. I feel like okay. I feel like they're gonna realize their potential here sooner or later. They're gonna realize how good of a team they are. And we'll mm-hmm. see that. It's just I don't know what's holding them back. I don't know if, if it's the coach not really giving them or showing them how good they are. I don't know how much tape study they do. I don't know, man, but every position on that team, I feel like is better than Indy. I feel like they're better than Jacksonville. I feel like they can, you know, there's some nice roster, you know, stuff going on in Houston. Uh, you know, but, but you know, in other places, quarterback, wide receiver, you know, running back, I think they got Houston beat. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Defensively, Houston might be a little stronger, right? You know, but I don't know. It's just, I feel like in, in the next three weeks, the next three weeks, I don't know when it's going to be, in the next three weeks, Tennessee going to realize how good they are. And y'all gonna see okay. a different squad come out there, you know? Okay, I yeah. hope you're right. Like I said, my fans <laughs> of Tennessee, I hope, I hope they do better. Yeah. Half team in the AFC West, San Diego Chargers. See, here's the deal about the San Diego Chargers. San Diego Chargers should not be in this situation. Like they look, they gave they they gave up the game to Kansas City, right? Mm-hmm. They uh, they got walked down by uh, who was New Orleans. Got walked down by New Orleans. Uh, listen, those games should have been won. Those games should they, they lost the games in the last in the last second. Which I don't know what that says about them, Glass. I don't know if that says because um, I cannot put them in the same category as New Orleans, right? Like you know that you can throw up all these points and all these yards, but you can't finish the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I know they got injuries and stuff. You know what I mean? But you know, I, I think San Diego is a is a nice squad. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you know, you got you got KC, you got Oakland, you got Denver. I, you know, that's tough. You know what I mean? I think. Out of those four teams, I would have to say San Diego is the weakest one. You know what I mean? So yeah. you know. I agree. I agree. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know. That was a good quick run. I like this. That was good. So this was uh this was nice. Uh we got to talk about some cool stuff today. It has uh you know, some people, 20 people reached. That's nice. And um and we got the show done this week, which is great. It was a little bit late, right? But we finished, yeah. you know, quite on time. It's all right, it's not bad. Um yeah. but that kind of thing. But uh it's it's always a pleasure, man. It's always a pleasure. Go ahead and always. let everybody know what's uh what's good with you and how they can find you and where they can see you at. Cool. Of course, if you don't see me here with my boy Big Q, brother JB, on uh, Time Boy, the Time Boy, <laughs> Team Boy TV live, or here with my boy here, Big Q, on uh, Three and Out. You can find me at Get With the Sports. This week, get your sports with us. Swag. Download the Spreaker app. Yes. All our shows there. Got any questions, comments, whatever? You can email me at Get With the Sports. That we're per- oh, Get With the Sports Two. At gmail.com, mm-hmm. blog pages, get with the sports that wordpress.com. Follow me, Twitter, Facebook, at get with the sports. It's too early for you, man. It's too early for you right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's too early for you right now. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, right? Oh, man. But it, but that's cool, though. You know, and listen, the next time you guys will see uh, us get together, it probably will be, you know, I got, I, I feel like I need to address my Panther fam. I feel like I, you know, I've been holding back on the podcast. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just trying to find a time to do it or whatnot. But I think I think the Carolina Panther fans need a stern talking to. I think they need a voice 
that hey, they can they're getting out of line. They're getting unruly, they, bro. They get a little bit unruly. I think I think it's time for them to, to they need a reality check. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like you guys need to, to, to go ahead and hit me up on facebook.com slash Team Boy TV for Facebook exclusive uh, Black and Blue podcast. It'll be the first one that we do this this season. And, you know, people saying, oh, you know, you ain't doing the podcast because the team ain't playing well. You know, but I was thinking about last year. <laughs> it was about week five before I actually started doing the podcast last year. So uh, yeah. it's, just, it's just finding the time to do it. I do believe it's an important time for our team. I think I do need to, to talk to my people. And I, and I need, because, you know, without the outside, you and JB trying to, you know, you know, discredit my squad. You know what I mean? So Saturday night, man, uh, around... I want to say about a quarter to 9.30, quarter to 10, somewhere around in there. Uh, we'll go ahead and do, uh, we'll get together on Facebook and we'll, we'll talk Panther Talk and uh, see what we need to address uh, what I think is a lot of things we need to address. And then, of course, uh, me and Vernie B will be back here on Facebook Live. And uh, I'm going to tell you, the love y'all been showing face, uh, the Team Boy TV game time on Sunday morning has been has been uh, tremendous, man. We definitely appreciate it. It's good to have Vernie back. Uh, she provide good, uh, you know, an analysis and, and you know, good banter from me, right? You know what I'm saying? Cause she, she tried to shut me down. Um, so, yes, yeah, on Sunday morning. And then, of course, you know, we'll round everything up on, on Monday night. I'll get with my fellas, class. JB, Raven, Shogun, and we'll uh, crunch everything down that happened on Sunday. And hopefully it'll be a better a better week than it was last week. Hopefully I have something to actually talk about versus, you know, getting jumped on by y'all dudes, man. You know what I mean? But again, uh, we want to thank you guys for coming and checking us out. And we'll see y'all next time. Y'all take, take it easy. Peace. Okay. <laughs>